Hi guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Thursday at 1 o'clock, which means it's time for a video tutorial on our YouTube channel. So, let me have two seconds to be sure that we are, uh, you know, going out across the internet here, and not just making a pretty picture on my screen. Oh, I better turn that off. I don't need to listen to myself. That is never a good thing. I'm not sure why. Do I always have that shadow there? Am I just noticing it now? I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I don't, I've moved everything around and I can't find what's causing it. So, you know, I, I got nothing, man. I got nothing. I don't know. So you'll have to cope. Hopefully it'll be okay. And we'll go ahead and get started here. I see some folks starting to join up. So, um, during the week, as I was, hey Faith, appreciate you joining, as I was perusing Facebook, you know, the rabbit hole, the sinkhole, the time sink that Facebook is, I was perusing it, and I was out, and I saw a post by, and I'm going to butcher her name, uh, Brigitte Keeling, on the Demonstrator Planning Place, and she had done this really cute um, fun fold card with the zany zebras. Uh, hey, Jean, thank you so much. My back is better. It is still sore. It doesn't seem to want to go away, but um, it's so many orders of magnitude better than it was last weekend that it isn't even in the same ballpark. Um, hey, Barbara. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Jacqueline. Glad to see you live today. Hi, Jerry. Appreciate y'all joining. So I, um, she didn't have any directions and so I found her blog and it is in German. And I was on my phone and didn't have a translator, so I decided to just figure it out. And so I did. She had a couple of pictures on her blog and I was able to um, figure out the dimensions pretty, pretty easily. And so I have made it for you today. And it uses many of the products in the uh, well, done, well Done Suite. And uh, that includes the punch, the whale punch, the whale done stamp set. I also, on the inside, used some sentiments from Many Mates. And I used multiple pieces of the gorgeous Whale of a Time DSP. Okay, so this is a fun fold card. Thank you, Amy. Hey, Stampinyama. I <laughs> appreciate you joining. Hey, Karen. So... Uh, you take off this little lid, and of course I've used the only dimensionals in the project are on the lid, as you will see why in just a second. Uh, so we're going to make that, and then this little doo opens up just like that. And then you get all of these little places to decorate. So I've got whale done on the front, and then you're kind of a big deal on the inside. Plus, I went kind of crazy with the inks, so don't get scared tomorrow when you see the list of projects. It's really just a lot of different ink colors because it's the ocean, right? Oh, thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Karen. Uh, yes, Faith, the uh, whale suite is awesome. Okay, so this is a really easy card, card box, box card, exploding box card. I don't even know what it's called, but... Uh, basically, it starts with a 6 by 12 inch piece of uh, cardstock, and then you think in terms of 2 inches. Everything is kind of worked off of 2 inches, okay? So all of the card cuts will be on tomorrow. So there's two hard pieces. The first is just cutting all the parts, and the second is folding it up, but that is actually pretty doable. I was trying to figure out the way that it folds the nicest, for me, it folds the nicest like that, where these pieces are folding down so that it makes the outer box look nice. Okay, so I decided, since I had just figured out how to do this, I decided to completely change it up and go right ahead and um, make it a little different. So I've changed all the colors, which means there's a distinct possibility I will get lost somewhere in the middle of making this so just bear with me hey Brooke uh, appreciate you joining so I will tell you if you have uh, printer paper sitting around hang on to it because although I don't have 12 by 12 printer paper and actually did have to blow a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock to figure this out I was able to work my lid dimensions with a piece of printer paper and so that saved um, a little bit of paper okay 
All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now I've changed up my color scheme. I decided instead of using Granny Apple Green like I had done on my sample for my card base, I was gonna use Pretty Peacock and then I was gonna have uh, my lid be Granny Apple Green, okay? So it all kind of goes together. I just pulled colors right out of the DSP pack. So easy peasy, nice and squeezy, no problem, okay? And I have cut a whole bunch of pieces of cardstock. Oh, and here's another thing I thought I would do because I, I just, you know, why not? I'm gonna use a different DSP pattern on what ends up being the tops, the top of the box. So for the top of the box, I'm gonna change to this pattern. I say I'm going to do that. We'll see if I succeed with that, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. She says the second time, because I told you that already once. Okay, so I've got a six by 12 inch piece of Pretty Peacock, and I'm going to pull out my Simply Scored. And with the six inch piece across the top, I'm going to score at two inches and at four inches. You can probably recognize the two inch math. Then I'm gonna flip it and go two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches. Okay, that's the card base. So we're gonna put this away for just a second. <laughs> well, you know, at least we're aware of the fact, Linda, that we are, uh, are you know, lost most of the time. Okay, so now I'm just going to score, fold all my scores. There is absolutely zero difficult about this card. It is a little time consuming. Let's just be honest. You can tell that it's time consuming, but if you enjoy decorating cards, it gives you so many opportunities. And, and so that is kind of fun. Okay, now let me pull my trimmer out and we're going to cut, make our cuts. Now, basically what you're going to, we're going to do is we're going to cut each of these folds to the center fold line, okay? So you can kind of see what we're fixing to do, right? Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to do this on your Stampin' Trimmer. So let's just go ahead and put ourselves at two inches to start with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the score, the score tool at the top and I've got my cut tool and there's a little mark here on the edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that to just shy of the two inch mark, just shy of that score. Okay. So we're just going to do that like that and go just shy. Perfect. And then we're going to come down to the next score and do the same. Just shy. Okay, and then guess how many more times we're gonna do this? Yes, all of the times. We're gonna do all of the times. Okay. You can also do this with a pair of paper snips if you're real good at cutting straight. Um, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. So since I have my trimmer, that is what I'm using. Okay, now guess what? Now we're gonna flip it and do the same. Hey, Daryl, appreciate you joining. Hi, Cheryl from Floridia. From Floridia. Okay, now we'll just repeat on this side. And you can, you can see the scores solid enough to place them in the cutting channel. Otherwise, you could extend your arm and keep moving the left edge of your cardstock over two inches with each cut, right? 
but actually you can really totally see it just fine to line it up with the edge. Okay, so once we get done thinking in terms of two inches, we're then going to start thinking in terms of one and seven eighths, okay? Because that is the size that is what I have used for my DSP in each of these squares and for the whisper white down the middle of the inside. Okay, okay there we go. Done. Done and done. And Mr. Trimmer can go right away. Okay, so you can see here is our card base. Done, right? This side will be the outside. This side will be the inside. What I did when I made this the first time is I put it together so that it was sitting the way it was going to be. And I wrote on on the outside which was the top so if you were doing a um, directional DSP you would want to know which was when the car the box is put together when the box is put together the way it's going to be this is up but on this one that folds down like that, that is up. Okay, so it, it, it would be different on each one. Trust me when I tell you, it's a heck of a lot easier if you just use a non-directional DSP. And that is what I'm gonna do because that's how I roll. Okay, so you can see the order that we're going to put them in. And now here we go, we're fixing to do some glit in. We're doing some glit in. Now, what I do need to remember is to not glue on these as I attempt a feat never seen before. Literally, I've never done this before. Okay, so I'm just going to put those there so I remember. And I decided after looking at this DSP here that these fishes were non-directional. They could go any which way because fishes go every which way from Sunday. So I decided I wasn't going to take the time to decide which was up and which was down. So we're just going to do some glitting. Um, I hope you guys have seen my ordering special that is going on through Saturday night. If I go to bed on Saturday and you haven't ordered, but your order is in my inbox on Sunday morning, I will honor that. It's for orders over $100 before shipping and tax. And all those orders will get free shipping, okay? So I hope you will take advantage of it. Finney felt like that was a pretty good ordering special for his fourth birthday. See, now this looks like a massive school of fish to me, just going and swirling and swirling and swirling. Swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling. So you can see it's really actually a card with a lot of busy work, right? I mean, this is not very rocket science-y. I mean, we're not even talking like low Earth orbit rocket science here. We're talking barely the Wright brothers. Make some cuts, glue some stuff, make sure you don't glue where you don't want it, you know. So these middle panels right here, these two are the bottom of the box. And yes, of course you could put DSP there, but it seems like kind of a waste of DSP, a perfectly good DSP. All right, and who wants to waste their pretty designer paper? Nobody does, that's who, nobody. Nobody does. Let's see, it's a great Finn birthday present. I know. Uh, well, you know, they can be belly up for just a minute while they're doing fish obatics. You've seen fish do fish obatics, Karen? Sure, of course you have. It's like a little circus in the water. Just like a little circus in the water. It's freaking me out. I look at that top DSP piece up there and it's all crooked and I'm like man I really put that on crooked that was not good Mare. not good 
not even a little bit of good. Alrighty, we're getting to the end, I promise. And then I'm going to kind of fold the box together so I can make sure I put my two top pieces on um, the direction I want. Although I don't think it matters. Well, it does matter because I could have them pointing outwards and that would be bad. So. Now think how cool you'd be if you took one of those, um, one of those scenery papers in this DSP and made it go all the way around the side of the box. Now that would be a feat, right? Hello, Heaven Best from the Panhandle of Florida. Thank you so much for joining. Solid paper. Yes, I got you, Linda. <laughs> That's what's nice about this DSP is I figure they can go any which way they want to. And I love, I decided this was a just, this was just Jade. And I love how Just Jade and Pretty Peacock go together. Beautiful. Beautiful combination. Okay, now I'm going to take these out. And I'm going to put this together. So these two middle ones are on the inside always. And then I like, this. these can go on the inside or the outside. It really doesn't matter. Actually, let's try this. I want to try something here. No? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I had it right. I had it the way it needed to be. Stop thinking, Mary. Stop thinking for the love of Pete. Okay. And then this will do the same. And I know it looks really confusing right now from where you're sitting, but once you've done it a couple of times, you'll see that it's not very confusing at all. Okay. Okay, so there's the top, and I'm going to put these on like so. Okay. So let's just do that while it's sitting here. Uh, hey, Krista, appreciate you joining. I'm glad you're on while I'm transmittalating, too. Okay, so we'll just put that there. I just thought it would be kind of fun for there to be a little scene when the recipient opens the lid on this one. So I think this is one of those cards. Cards. I keep saying, I'm just going to call it a card, okay, because it's got like a sentiment and everything. I think this is one of those cards where you could just keep getting a little more complicated every time you did it, right? Because you would figure out kind of the kind of the way it works. Okay. So this will be on and then we'll make we'll do the inside. There we go. Aw. And that's so cute, the little crabbies crabbling around. Aw. Okay. Now we'll open this up. And you can decide which is the top and the bottom. That doesn't really matter at all. We'll go ahead and make our sides. This is just another 12 pieces. I used the 2020-2022 uh, in color DSP. And I like this kind of, um, to me it's not really ocean water, but it's, it's also not wood grain, which would be kind of weird, right? And I'm just gonna put those on these outside flaps right quick. Because I know what you were thinking is, you know, Mare, I did not quite copy how to glue the 16 other pieces of DSP that you used. So could you please show me 12 more times? And I thought to myself, of course I can. That is my duty here. Okay. Now, let me just ask, for those of you who are not demonstrators, how many of you think this would be the bundle that you would pick as your free bundle when you join Stampin' Up? I'm just, I mean, I'm thinking this would be a good one, especially if you, like, don't have a die-cutting machine, because it's a, this is a punch bundle. We've got 34 different bundles, and, like, eight of them are punch bundles, which means you do not need to have a die-cutting machine to make them work. And I don't know about you, but I am a fan of punch bundles. Well, punches in general. I always buy, there's like three things that I just immediately buy everything of. I buy all the new embossing folders. I buy 
all the new background stamps. For some reason, I really love background stamps, and you're probably thinking to yourself, Mayor, I've seen you use a background stamp approximately 1.1 times. Why do you buy them? I don't know. I just love them. I really do. And when you want one, you want one. They're like a stand mixer. The other thing I always buy everything of is the punches. I love punches. Yes, do I use them all the time? Of course not. But I love punches. I love all sorts of punches. I really love Just Jade and Pretty Peacock together. Man, what a color combination. Wouldn't it be nice? I think Pretty Peacock needs to be a solid, a real color, not an in color. It needs to become a, a color right away. It needs to become a color right away. Hi, Terry. How are you? Right, honeybee? I gotcha. The backgrounds are just fun. What are the measurements of the card? Oh, these are, okay, so each of these squares is two inches, so these are all one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, okay? So I just use my normal eighth inch uh, border, and on two inch squares, that's what it comes out to. So yes, I've done a little cutting today and yesterday. Okay, almost there people, bear with me. Try to hold on. I know that the excitement is building. I know, the excitement is building. Oh, here we go. Square number 12, which is handy because I'm on square number 12 on the card base counted right. I did count twice, so I was hoping that I would get it right and I wouldn't have to, you know, stop the presses and fix it. Okay, now, you can see, oops, that that is upside down. You can see that I made my um, scene kind of flow from square to square, right? So the way I did that is I used two pieces of Whisper White, one and seven eighths inches wide by five and five eighths inches long. And if you do some complex math, then you would know that one and seven eighths plus one and seven eighths plus one and seven eighths is five and five eighths. So I'm going to stamp on this whole, these two whole strips like this, and then I'm just going to cut the whole strip into three, one and seven eighths inch square squares, okay? Now, the reason that I didn't make this all completely one square or one um, piece is because I really kind of wanted a, a little more, that's really where I want the sentiment, you know, so that I didn't inadvertently end up with the sentiment on a, on a split. And, you know, it just depends. Maybe you're good enough to do it without that being an issue, but I was feared for my, my sentiment. Okay, so let's go ahead and start stamping, and I'm going to start with said sentiment, which is, you're kind of a big deal, and I am stamping it in Pretty Peacock. Jenny says it gave me that name 25 years ago, Mountain Stamping. Huh. What was I saying? I said it needs to become a permanent color. I know. It is a one it is like the best color ever. You are correct. Okay. Now I'm going to stamp it right here. And that kind of gives me the foundation for the whole rest of the scene, right? So once I've got that, I'm going to put my card base aside so that I can stamp uninhibitedly and hopefully not get anything all over it. Okay, so what I did then is I just kind of put these two pieces together, sort of like that, so that when I got ready to stamp across, I would be able to uh, stamp across. So I'm going to take my pretty peacock and we're gonna stamp a little bit of grass, a little bit of grass here, there, everywhere. It's going to look completely different from my first go, I'm sure. But you're basically just making a scene, not making a scene like what it sounded like I just said, but you're making a scene. 
Okay, and then I'm going to clean that, and I'm going to make some... I think I'll get my granny apple green out now. I have got too much stuff and too many ink pads all stacked up over here. And I'm going to do a little bit of this um, coral. And I think it's going to be, I don't know, I have never dived. So I don't know if there's actually granny apple green coral. But there is in my sea right now. we may have to come back to this because you know I've got a lot of stuff to put in and I don't want to get too carried away because what I really want to put in are my octopuses my octopods and they're gonna be blackberry bliss because I'm pretty certain that is what color octopuses are is blackberry bliss this is very dangerous I'm using blackberry bliss on, on white cardstock that what could possibly go wrong Isn't these so cool? I love him a lot. Now, I don't think I'd love him so much in real life. I feel relatively confident about that. I can't decide whether when we go to Maui next summer, and we are going to Maui next summer, by golly, by gosh, whether I want to see, we, we signed up for a, mm, it's, it's snorkeling, isn't it, Amy? Snorkeling, I think. Um, not diving because no, it's not diving, is it? We aren't diving, right, Amy? It's snorkeling. That's completely different. Because diving that uses like air and stuff, and I could get the bends, and and then what would I do? What would I do if I got the bends? Okay, let's see. How about we put in some um, of our grasses in the granny apple green? Thanks, honeybee. All right. What I thought I would do is just, I'm gonna stamp this off. I didn't do that on the first one, but I'm doing it on this one, because I can. And I'm going to just put it right like that. This is such a fun set. You can make all these little scenes however you want, right? Aren't those cool? <laughs> You know, we hit, my brother had a, he had saltwater aquariums when we were growing up. And I'm pretty sure we had all this, but the coolest thing he had was he had a coral, or no, he had a, an enemy, and we had clownfish. And the clownfish were the coolest darn things. They were just so much fun and so pretty get a water camera and take pictures. I, I guess I could take pictures while I'm attempting to not hyperventilate. I suppose that's possible, Karen. I'm actually a little surprised that I signed up to do it because I'm a little terrified of it. That I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little terrified. Okay, so now I'm going to do Calypso Coral Fishes in the deep blue sea. Look at that, look at that little fish school crossing that border right there. I think we're gonna need a lot of fish because this seems like a busy place. Can anybody find Dory? <laughs> that was a little joke right there. Can anybody find Dory? Okay, now I think we'll do some pool party bubbles. We need some bubbles, some bubbles, oh bubbles. There we are, there's bubbles. We'll just do bubbles here and there. They're not like coming out of any particular fish's mouths or gills or wherever bubbles come from in the ocean. They're just kind of everywhere to make you know that you're in the water, okay? It's so you know you're in the water. Work with me here. By putting these, it becomes obvious and apparent that you're in the water. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. You'd be like, I'm just in cardstock. That's dumb, Mary. Okay, and let's see, I have another couple of things. You found Nemo? Where's Nemo? Woohoo! <laughs> Picture taking will make my take my mind off breathing. May, that may be a good thing. Okay, let's see, I'm going to stamp, I think we need a seahorse, because you know, horse, 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 we gotta have a horse. 
even if it's a C one. You know, I always Aquaman was my very favorite Marvel. Actually, he's he's uh, he's DC. I'm sorry. Was my favorite because he rode a seahorse. And because he could talk to the dolphins, which I thought was pretty stinking cool. I think this guy's also going to be hanging on the sentiment a little bit. Oh, come on, man. Shh. Everybody hold still. Okay, there. Whew. Okay. And let's see. He might... He might need to be... We need another one over here. They travel in packs. Yeah. Actually, it's probably a herd. If you think about it. Think that through a little bit. It's probably a herd. Oh, 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 I don't have a turtle. I need a turtle. Don't you think a turtle would probably be... I think a turtle is, is going to be shaded spruce on this one. On the other one, he was granny apple green. But I think on this one, he's going to be... He's going to be somewhere. I don't even know where he is. Hang on a second. got to find him. Is he on a block? No. Nope. Are you on this block? No. Nope. Well, goodness, maybe he's in my stamp case. Wouldn't that be curry curry? Jellyfish's sting. No, nope, he's not there. Okay, he's out here somewhere on a block. Hang on, I'm going to find him. Seahorse. Bubbles and fish. Oh, there he is. You little hiding. Have you ever heard of a hiding turtle? Well, that's what this was. He was a hiding turtle. Okay. So we're going to make him. I want to see how he looks in shaded spruce oh yes 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 he'll be very pretty okay and we're going to put him he'll go there and then i think he's gonna be up here uh -huh. and then i think that's enough turtles that's plenty of turtles that is some serious sea life right there okay now I'm going to close all of my ink pads so that I don't have a terrible incident. <laughs> Did you get that? An incident? Okay. You guys have got to laugh a little more. I can't hear any of you laugh. Okay. So now, as advertised, I'm going to cut these strips uh, at 1 and 7 eighths. And then they will all be one and seven eighths inch square. Assuming I have done my pre-math correctly, which I think I have. I feel relatively confident. I mean like 98% sure. Maybe 97 and a half. I feel pretty good about it. And the one that um, that Brigitte did was with the zany zebras and it was really really cute really really cute i will try to put her a post a link to her post so that you can see her card tomorrow or at least a picture of the card okay all right now let's pull our base back and then of course the only trick is is you really want everything to go back in the same order that it came on so always start with your uh, doohickey, your number one, and then, oh, that's two, so I'm pretty sure I had this guy up here, I feel relatively confident about that, <clears throat> yep, <coughs> sorry, I had to take a little drink, I was, I'm obviously yakking way too much, nope, See, it's like a little puzzle. So you get two things. You get to be creative and you get to do a jigsaw puzzle. Isn't that fun? You know, that would actually be fun to do a little jigsaw puzzle, like a six by six one and make your scene with some, um, well, that would really be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be fun for kids is like a puzzle. You could make a puzzle just like this. Where's my ink? Where's my glue? Where is my anything? Anchor an incident. It's an incident. That's what happens when you smudge your ink where it doesn't belong, which often is fixable with a rhinestone or a sequin, but sometimes that smudge gets places you didn't want it to be. 
And then it's an unfixable incident. Alrighty. There we go. And as advertised, the sentiment ends up in the middle where you want it. Did it sound like I said sediment there? I didn't. I said sentiment. Sentiment. I really had maybe way too much fun making my little undersea scenery here because it's it was really fun. I enjoy, I'm not going to lie, I love my Shaded Spruce Turtle and my Blackberry Bliss Octopus the best. I think they're so cute. Okay, the Clips of Coral Fish are really cute too. I thought about doing another school in like Melon Mambo and then I thought that is too many fish. Nobody would believe that many fish. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few sentiments from... Uh, many mates, many mates, and I'm going to stamp them in various colors and then fussy cut the little words and use those to add a little more fun to the inside of the card. But I'm going to clean these because I don't remember exactly what colors I used and I don't want to screw up my ink pads. Okay, so let's see. Let's do congrats in Calypso Coral. And then we can do Oh yeah, definitely. A birthday bonanza would have been a fun, fun set to make. Alright, I think let's do Granny Apple Green for celebrate. And then I think we'll use our pretty peacock again. Or you're just so fabulous. Okay. And then we'll do a little fussy cutting. <sighs> yeah, Karen, if you're asking me how much caffeine, it's not it's just not that much. It really isn't. It hasn't been. And you'll be proud to know that I've started making my iced coffee with well, I, it, you make it with four scoops of coffee because little scoops, you know, measuring coffee scoops because that's how you make it because it gets diluted. And I have started using three full throttle coffees and one hazelnut decaf. So it's much, much less caffeinated than I am accustomed to. Okay. We're just cutting those off like that. And then this one, you kind of want to be a little careful, just saying. Kind of want to be a little careful and get a little closer, because. And I'm going to say, you're so fabulous, instead of you're just so fabulous. You're just too good to be true. Don't know why I'm singing that to you. Maybe maybe I need to go half and half on the caffeinated and decaf. I don't know. Maybe. I'm going to use your... Now I've just lost it. Where is it? Where did you go? <laughs> okay, I've lost my entire sentiment. That's so funny. Except for how it isn't. Where did it go? Is it right in front of me? It's right there. Dumb it. So apparently caffeine also makes you blind as a bat. And then I'm going to cut out fabulous. You're fabulous, darling. You'll look fabulous. <laughs> it's gone again. <laughs> okay, it's looking right at me, isn't it? I feel like I'm playing a game of uh, three-card Monty with myself. Well, we may be going to put on there, you're fabulous, unless it shows up here sometime real soon. Here, I'll do this like this. There it is. See? If you just do... 
completely unexpected, it goes away. It comes right up. It's right there. <laughs> okay. Now, I will take my pretty peacock. Let's see. Now, I think I'm going to use my granny apple green. And we're going to edge each of these. And then we'll adhere them with liquid glue and put on some sequins. And then we will be done. Now, I don't think you want to try to get fancy here and put sequins on these parts because of how they kind of interweave with each other. But, And I don't think you'd want to put dimensionals either. So we're doing strictly flat adhering and it'll still be fabulous because it's got it in the sentiments it's fabulous okay there that is done and then we're going to put i don't know what this person is going to be celebrating but it's going to be something big huge. I'm certain of it. The only one I didn't pick up, that is correct. And I didn't pick it up 12 times. <laughs> We're going to do your just fabulous like that. Okay, and a little bit of liquid glue. Finn is sleeping off his birthday party. No, he didn't have a birthday party, but he did get a new toy. It's it's like a, don't tell him. It's, you people with children, I know you did this, where like you buy four or five toys and there's, you keep three or four of them aside and then you meter them out through the year. So instead of giving them 27 toys at Christmas, you give them 17 toys at Christmas and then you give them one, you know, around the 4th of July. And then you give them another one around Mother's Day. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what I did. I bought kind of a six-pack of dog toys. And I kept one back. Yes, I did. Okay, now let's add some bling. We're going to add a little bling-a-bling -bling here. <laughs> well... Just tell him you're watching the goofy woman from Georgia and he'll maybe he'll understand. Okay. Look, I got a mess over here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use my little putty dude doo doodah. Come here, putty doodah. Gosh. Okay. And I'm going to use it to pick up some sequins. Did you guys see, have you guys seen these sequins in this, in the cool whale of a time sequin set? Look, can you see it? I'm going to put it on this piece of white paper. No, I'm not because it is stuck via static electricity to my finger. There we go. Can you see that? It looks like a little shell. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I love the little shells, and I finally decided I was using them, so I'm going to put one right there, like that. Hmm. Where are you? There it is. I'm going to put one like that, and then I think we'll put a different sequin here. That one looks likely. These are so pretty. They look like fish scales. They're kind of shiny and pretty. That doesn't have enough glue, Mary. Come on. Come on. Don't be so chintzy. Actually, it isn't chintziness. It's, oh my gosh, let's not have glue go every stinking wear. Because it will. I can assure you, it will go every stinking wear. Let's see. We'll put one right here. What color should we get? Let's get a blue one. 
that. And we'll put another one up here. And I mean, you know, you can kind of do this for as long as you've got the patience to keep doing it, right? You can just bling this booger right up. Just bling it up. Bling it up. Do you, do you bling it up? A scallop shell. That's right. It is a scallop shell. That's what it looks like. And I'm sure all scallop shells are pink. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> this is not glue. <laughs> oh, <what a> dork. <laughs> All right, let's see. What other colors have I got? Let's see. That one looks pretty. Let's put that one on there. <sighs> Hang on. Lost it. There it is. I lost the glue, not the sequin. I knew where the sequin was. I couldn't find my glue. Guys, I've been on a um, on a slug killing spree. All of a sudden this year, I don't know why, I've got these little slugs in my garden. And my protective marigolds, the marigolds that I planted so many of to protect all of my vegetables, appear to be their favorite thing. They took one of my marigolds to the bare stems. I mean, like, to the bare stems. And I feel a little guilty killing them all, but, I mean, I'm getting over it really fast because it's working. So I read two things. I read that you make a mix of Epsom salt, one cup of Epsom salt to one cup of water, and dissolve it, and then spray them all over everything. And that is helping. But then you make beer traps. Or in my case, I've made Mike's hard apple cider traps because that's what I had. And apparently they like it. And maybe it's not cruel because they get in there, they drink themselves silly, and they die. So, you know, probably worse ways to go. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good. And I'm going to let this sit and let all those sequins think about what they've done while we make us a lid. Let's make a lid, shall we? A lid, we're going to make a lid. Now, what I did for my lid is I put my box together. Let me use my first box. I put my box together like this and just held it because I didn't at that point have anything to hold it together like a lid but I held it together like it would be, and I measured, and it is a four inch by two inch box. So I said, okay, let's go four and an eighth inch, and then I want about three quarters of an inch down on the sides, okay? So I did the math, and I came up with three and five eighths by five and five eighths for my piece of cardstock. And then you just um, score at three quarters of an inch all the way around. Now this is not a fancy dancy, um, fancy dancy, that's the word I just made up. This is not a fancy lid like the ones that I made for my bottle holders. Um, yes, no, he can't. They're, they're all in my raised beds and my slug traps are little, are like, um, like pickle jar lids with the with the hard apple cider in it. Yeah, and he can't get to it anyway. But thank you, that's a very good point. We do make very sure that we don't put poison where he can get to it. All right, so I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch from either end, so that's there. And then one, two, three quarters of an inch there, so that's at four and five eighths, or seven eighths, sorry. And then flip and three quarters of an inch here and one two three quarters of an inch there which is at two and seven eighths okay there we go hey norma thank you appreciate it it's a total case i mean the decorations aren't a case but the the card the fold is so now i'm just folding all of these score lines and we'll give it a little burnish here Okay, now to make a card turn into a lid, what you do is you just snip 
your scores two on the same side right to the right to the score line okay can you see what I'm doing there like so like I said this isn't a fancy one and then to make it just fold a little nicer you can you can clip off a little bit like that to make that into a tab otherwise you get a lot of extra cardstock in there and it can be kind of um, thick and bulky and not not fold up very well so I'm just going to do that on both sides, like a sew. Okay, and then let's use a little of the new Stamp and Seal Plus, which is like Fast Fuse was. So this has got a little more stickum. Um, if this was a really big lid, or it was a lid that was really like going to hold stuff other than being just a card lid, I would probably use a little piece of tear and tape but I'm gonna try this and see how that works. So just put it on the same side on both tabs and then fold it in and line up your corners and your edges like that. Okay. And then we'll do it on the other side. Note to self, probably easier to do all the little flaps before you fold them up. Just saying. See what I did there? Like any good teacher, I like to show you what not to do. And that is what I just did. So put all your, your uh, stamp and Seal Plus on your tabs before you fold the first one up. Okay, there we go. And this is Granny Apple Green in case you didn't recognize it. Okay, and now we're just going to adhere some strips. These are 5 8 inch wide and 4 inches and 2 inches, which is handy because you can get two little strips <clears throat> out of one little piece of DSP. Hi, Faye. <coughs> All right, we're just going to... Buddy just tried to call me right in the middle of my, my hoo-ha. Not my hoo-ha. Take that back. I took that. Just take it out. I didn't even say that. All right. And this is a little piece of DSP from Whale of a Time. It's one of the pretty peacock pieces. And you know what? I just right then decided that there was an up and a down on that. So I'm going to try to make it go up. I mean, it sort of is. You could say it's abstract. But if you really look at it like I am right now, because I can see it good then it's got an up and a down. Okay. So we're just going to go all the way around. And let's see, that looks like up. More up than not up. And you're just kind of eyeballing it, guys. It's not really all that critical, but if you could make it be about the same Hey, Tish. <clears throat> yeah, decorating the lid before is also good. That works, too. My philosophy is the harder I can make it on myself, the better. Because, you know, why not? But, yes, I wouldn't decorate the top, but it probably would help to decorate the sides first. <clears throat> I mean, you know, if doing things easy is how you want to do, <laughs> we all want to do it like that. <clears throat> I have got some ridiculous tickle in my throat, so I'm going to get another drink. Hang on just a second. You made a lot of boxes, huh? So I went to the dentist yesterday. I finally decided. I actually kind of called him on whatever not yesterday was on Tuesday to say, "Hey, are you actually doing cleanings?" I don't really want to come. It was what I wanted them to say was, "No, we're not doing routine cleanings. Don't be silly. We have a lockdown, haven't you heard? Things aren't going so good." But no, she goes, "Oh no, we're doing them. Yay!" All right, I'm going to do pretty peacock. I'm going to stamp my sentiments in pretty peacock. So 
So I had my teeth cleaned and then I decided I was trying to like make this leap. She had her mask on and I of course did until I couldn't, which makes sense if you think that through. But interestingly, none of the people at the reception desk had theirs on and I was like, but they made me sign a thing that said I hadn't been sick and that I understood if I got sick, I had to let them know. And they took my temperature and all that stuff. And they're sitting there without a mask. And I'm thinking, what in the world, people? What in the world? What in the world? Okay, I stamped. On this little guy, I did my whale in Night of Navy. But I also did one in um, Pretty Peacock. And I think I'm going to use that on this one. So I'm going to pop him on with some dimensionals because you got to have, di good Lord, got to have some dimensionals on every project. It's my personal rule. So it really bothers me when I make a project without it. All right. And we'll put one right here. Okay. I love this little guy. Just stamp him on some white and punch him with his punch. And there's also little um, waves in as part of the punch. So and blowhole spewing there, like that. Ooh, that made me want to be on the boat in Alaska. Just saying that about whale whale blowing. All right, and we're just gonna tip him like that. He's really getting ready to breach right now. And then we'll put us a sick one or two. We'll put some of those down here. I'm going to put some of those shells down there like that. I like the shells. I do like those shells. There's one. I think they would hang together, don't you? Scallops. Would there be like a scallop community? A community of scallops? I don't know. I don't even know if I've ever eaten a scallop, so I certainly don't know how they live. But I think they're cute when they're made into sequins. And then how about, we'll put one right here. Not a shell, just a sequin. Hang tight with me, folks. We're almost there. Let's put that like that. Oh, get down there. Okay, cool. And then we'll pop him on with some dimensionals. I reached my no no cut dimensionals point earlier than I anticipated. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be careful because my sequins aren't maybe as securely on there right now as they could be. I want to be sure that they have a chance to stick. Broiled, well, you, you kind of caught me at, you got me at butter, so. So I did, the, um, this whale is pretty peacock. This one is pretty peacock. The one on the sample that was on the thing is in Night of Navy, so you could do any of the colors. Pretty certain there are neither Night of Navy nor pretty peacock whales, so. It's all good, man. It's all good. And yes, is this overkill on the dimensionals? I know. I got it. I understand. I can't help it. It's a sickness. It is a sickness. I am uh, currently, as we speak, you can't tell because it's not here uh, under the camera. I am growing a pizza dough out of sourdough. And when I looked last, it had doubled in size. So when I go from here, I'm going to start... It's only two, but I'm going to start punching it down and making it into a pizza. And then I'm going to freeze part of it because I read somewhere that you could freeze pizza dough. So I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay, let's see how it turns out. We're going to put, let's put our original together. And then we'll put our new one together. Tuck in. Whoop. There we go. Okay. You can do this, Mary. You can do this. And then put those on the outside. And put 
put those on it. Oh, I love that with the little scene on the top. And it kind of matches the little scene on the top top. And then we'll put that on like so. <gasps> How sweet. I love it. I don't even know which one I like better. They're so cute. What a great fold. This one isn't put together right. I don't like how that's working right there, but it's okay. Yeah. I want what I want. Let me see. I'm just trying something now, okay? Just work with me here. I'm just trying something. Now, if you put those outside edges on the outside, there you go. That's what you really want to do. Okay, look. Look, I'm going to show you how to put these together. You see these two that are that are sides? Those should be the way outside. Okay? Watch. So fold like that and up. Fold like that and up. And I will show you why. See, this was truly an experiment. There. Because that makes this bottom a solid crease. And it looks much more box-like than this. See how it looks different? So let's, let's fix this one too. So we're gonna go up, and it's also a little easier to even just figure. It's easier to even just figure, to figure like that. There, and up, and then put on the, uh, put on your lid. Your perfectly sized, custom-made lid. Yes. Oh, I do love this very much. Now, I am going to tell you, this is going to take some extra postage. <laughs> but you know what's really cool? Is you could, in fact, put a piece of candy in here. Because this is a sturdy enough box that you could put a little piece of wrapped candy in here. I'm just saying. If I made this, I wouldn't give it to anyone. <laughs> there you go. All right, you guys, I hope you will get the uh, Whale Done Bundle. I hope you will take advantage of my free shipping. I hope, mostly, that you will join my team between now and the end of July, June so that you get the free bundle, the awesome starter kit, and start collecting up that 20%. And, oh, by the way, if you do that, you're going to be all ready for the pre-order of the next catalog, which starts the 1st of July. Just throwing that out there. You'll have your 20% discount when the new catalog comes out. All right, guys. I appreciate you spending time. It was a whole hour today, and I blame myself. Hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you hopefully on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern on my Facebook page. We'll see you. Bye.